Hello everyone, a very good evening to all of you. And in this video, I shall try to give you a very little insight on a poem uh, written by David Meloff and the poem title is Wild Lemons. This poem, Wild Lemon, uh, it is one of the toughest poems uh, personally for me to explain. I have read the poem again and again, but still I couldn't able to find the appropriate meaning of this uh, particular poem. And But still from various places, various sources, I have gathered some knowledge about this poem and I have tried to explain through this video in a very uh, simple way and in a very brief way. So uh, do not read this video as a, a sole uh, material for your answer writing or for your exam. Uh, it is just a reference for you. Okay. Uh, so without any delay, let's begin the video. Uh, the poem Wild Lemons, it is originally published in 1980 and it is written by an Australian writer, uh, David Jers and Joseph Malouf. And the, the poem consists of 32 lines. And through this poem, the poet has endeavored or he has tried to depict or delineate his feelings for his motherland and his motherland's natural things. And it, especially the wild lemons means wherever he goes or wherever he is staying now, but uh, that wild lemon, that thing still reminds him of his own country. And that thing really gives him pleasure. That kind of feeling the, uh, the poet has tried to share through his poetry. Besides, he has also reconciled past with the present through his poetic creations. And it is one of the examples of his this uh, notion of reconnecting past with the present. And uh, in the uh, poem, he has also mentioned about a line, about uh, a line that may be related to a original Australian community. Okay, there he says that uh, uh, the wild lemons that might have been planted before the European settlers came. So that may hint that he might have been trying to portray uh, the significance of uh, a originals. Uh, okay, uh, and I will try to give you a little detail about the uh, a originals of Australia. Uh, and the wild lemons that might have been planted by the native or aboriginal people long, long before the European settlers came. So uh, on January 26, 1788, Captain Arthur Phillip, uh, he had guided a fleet of 11 British ships carrying convicts to the colony of New South Wales and founded Australia. So before the arrival of uh, British colonizers, uh, this place is known as South Wales, New South Wales by the uh, other or, or outsiders. Before the arrival of Britishers, the indigenous or native people of Australia, they are also called as aboriginals, they had been living since time immemorial in the Australian uh, continent. Okay, But uh, when they had arrived, their population grew and uh, their uh, the class between aboriginals and the European settlers, it grew in a very uh, massive way. And there are more than 500 different aboriginal people still living in Australia. Uh, here the typing mistake uh, is done that here I have written Africa, but it should be Australia. And they became strangers in their own land when the Europeans, they settled in huge numbers. The native Australians or the aboriginals, they fought against Britishers since its arrival or since its inception, but owing to minority and lack of population and lack of techniques, modern techniques, they were suppressed, massacred, subjugated and dominated by the uh, white settlers. And uh, from 1790s to 1950s, the aboriginals, they have been massacred, exploited, murdered by the whites. Okay, So it is unfortunate that uh, they have to suffer this kind of thing in their own land. And this uh, thing, this kind of thing happened not only in Australia, if you go to American continent, if you go to your USA, then too, you will get there that the Red Indians or the uh, Native Americans, uh, they, they were the original inhabitants of America, but now you can see there are different kinds of people now live there, and that uh, began uh, with the uh, settlement of British. Okay, British they had uh, first settled in USA, and they have uh, they have tried to uh, eradicate the native people. First, they have uh, defeated them in the war, and then uh, day by day the country grew and their population to suffer. Okay, and now too they are not uh, in a very pro prominent position in USA. Then you can. Uh, research about it okay then now let's go to the point the point begins with the line uh, through all those years keeping the present open to the light of the moment uh, mo mo moment that was the path we found you might call it so throughout the point uh, i will not read the whole poem so i will just give you the little knowledge we, which i have gained okay throughout the poem the point has depicted or he has leaned that wherever we go or wherever the point goes he's 
identity or our identity will be the same. It never changes according to geographical place. Rather, it reminds us of our roots in the form of memories or reminiscence or nostalgia. Similarly, the poet says that uh, though he does not uh, live in his own country, Australia, right now, but still, uh, uh, it utterly makes him happy that the wild lemons in another place too feel the same and it smells the same and it tastes the same. So, uh, wherever he goes, that uh, his motherlands, uh, that thing still reminds him in many ways and uh, among them, this wild lemon, these two, one of them that always reminds him of his own country. Okay, uh, that's it. This is a very short, very short video. I have tried to uh, present it before you, and I hope you have learned a little bit about the poem. And for the further understanding, you must re read the uh, text of the poem and you must do your own research. Thank you so much.